Hey, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to do a really quick video on book comparisons, keyword rankings, and just a lot of stuff that I don't normally cover on this channel because it's not really my thing. Uh, but I do think that it's interesting to find out how well books do, how well you know readers respond to books, and also how often they may be searching for them. So what I'm using is this uh, keyword tool called Nozzle. It's actually a SERP analyzer, um, SEO. Um, uh, helper and all that stuff and it's actually an app on AppSumo for another day and a half uh, if you're not familiar with AppSumo I do highly recommend you guys check that out uh, AppSumo is essentially a place to get up and coming software uh, for a lifetime deal uh, instead of paying annual subscription fees like you would most competitors um, and so forth so this is um, what do they say this one is similar to Bright Edge, SEO, Clear I don't even know what any of those are. So this may not be for your for you. And, and again, this video is not really here to promote Nozzle, uh, but I am using Nozzle to make a point about the book industry. So uh, a little bit of backstory. So uh, back in 1999, I wrote this story called Gutter Child. I did it for college. My uh, I think it was my regular fiction class. Uh, early uh, spring 1999. It was my third story of the semester. I think it was the one that we were basically our final story of the, of the term and it followed uh, one that did pretty well with readers called Eve of Construction. Uh, not like in the chronology. I mean, I'm just saying I wrote that one after. And then um, that was in 99 and then in 2004 I put all the stories I'd written uh, in I think prior to 1999 and up to Gutter Child being the last one and in an anthology I called uh, Nomadic Souls a Collection Junk Volume 1. So that's where it stayed for, you know, about 12 years and then Back in 2015, I started putting a lot of my older stories to ebook, and on I think it was in January or February of I think it was February of 19, uh, 19 of uh, 2016, I finally put Gutter Child ebook, but I didn't want to put the original story um, that I had because it just wasn't that filling. I needed something more relevant, so that's what I did. I put up uh, this book called Gutter Child, and if you go to my website, which is now open. Uh, finally, uh, I just took the construction page down this weekend. Um, not that it's finished, there's still some uh, pages that need work, but uh, it's good enough that I, visitors can start coming whenever they want. Um, so I, I went ahead and put the, uh, the ebook out in 2016 and uh, made it modify the cover a few times. This is the final cover I'm sticking with, but this is the book. And, uh, you know, I mean, I was pretty proud of it. I had one of my friends' daughter read review. She left a review on Goodreads. It was um, a good time. Uh, but it was just, you know, like all my books, it was pretty much dead in the water. No one really knew about it. No one cared. It was just, you know, I didn't have the promotion behind it. Didn't know how to promote it. And it was a novella, so I wasn't really going to go out and do a big push for it anyway. So uh, I think it comes out to about 150 pages, roughly. So not the kind of book I would, I would go crazy overhyping. But I, it was a good book. I, you know, I really enjoyed it. I, I, my friend's daughter really enjoyed reading it. That was the only one of my collection she really wanted to read, and she uh, she loved it. So that was good. Glad that uh, it fulfilled the audience expectation. Well, anyway, come uh, about November 2020, you know, the year of uh, fun times for all. Um, I went through just to kind of check my, you know, usual, uh, you know, reviews of. Uh, of different book pages to see if anything was gathering reviews anywhere. Um, so I went through you know all my books, and then it came Gutter Child's turn to do that. And when I logged into um, the bookstores to see Gutter Child's progress, I came across this lovely gem. Dun, da, da, da. It was on pre-order, but uh, it was coming, and I saw you know, January twenty sixth. Uh, 2021 I was going to have a new competitor for my name or for my title and uh, you know I saw oh crap it's by Harper Collins um, this might actually be kind of big you know no doubt it's gonna push my book way off the radar it actually believe it or not brought my book up but that's an, I'll get to that in a minute um, anyway I, I kind of knew that you know the future of my version of gutter child was doomed at the start once I saw that that was coming because I mean Anything that Harper Collins does is going to get the push behind it. So sure enough, Gutter Child by Gile Richardson comes out. And by the way, if you are Gile Richardson, I, hopefully I've seen your name right. Uh, if you're watching this, congratulations for your release um, almost 10 months later. Um, congratulations for doing as well as you are. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I saw that was coming and I was just, I was expecting... Um, 
a potential push for my own book on January 26th. And sure enough, I had, you know, I never, no one ever buys the book. And by, you know, I think that week I had five sales. So it does help that when a big name comes along using your title, that big name can ultimately bring your title up. I think before uh, Jaya Richardson's book came out, I was ranked, I think, sixth on um, Amazon, which not that anyone was looking for Gutter Child anyway. Uh, but then once her book came out, mine immediately got pulled up to second. So that's cool. That's um, so again, Jael, if you're watching this, thank you for you know earning me 20 bucks. Appreciate it. That's uh, a lot of coffee. Anyway, um, so now that you know we're kind of through, I want to show you guys something interesting. So going back to my Nozzle account, um, if you scroll down, I don't even. I think I'm in the single keyword anal analyzer. Uh, this tool by the way has a lot of different features I'm not gonna go through all of them because again this is not a product review but it is um, it does give you some insights about bookstores and how much traffic they actually give your book so if you look at gutter child by Jaya Richardson obviously she's dominating the chart she's number one I, and I totally expected that would happen uh, not at all surprised by that and of course she's got Goodreads number two but oh look who's at number three I am and again, this is the book that you can see I have that one vote is still there. Um, but anyway, the um, I'm still ranking number th three for the, my Goodreads entry. So it goes to show a lot of people are um, reading Goodreads. And it also goes to show uh, that Goodreads did a nice job kind of putting my title in proximity to one that's actually popular. So I, think, I do think that's helped uh, get me some readers. I've had... I mean, again, it's not impressive. I, I, I don't market this book. So for a book that doesn't ever get marketed, for a novella, no less, I still got, I think, in total about seven or eight uh, purchases this year uh, across all channels, which is a lot better than I, than I ever get. So um, that's not bad. And on my blog um, for 2021 alone, um, well, I'll get to that. I'm, I'm kind of jumping the gun here. Um, but anyway, that's a, a pretty good indicator of where people are getting their information but if you keep on going uh, you'll find that um, you know there's a review site here and then you have Barnes and Noble uh, is actually you know one review out of you know difference of 94 on Amazon so that also tells you something about how often reviewers review um, but Bar Barnes and Noble is like the next bookstore to rank and that's ranking number six again for her book uh, you'll notice I'm not in here and then the publisher uh, the Canadian version of the publisher uh, is uh, ranking of seven. I guess that's where Jael Richardson must live because I think there's a um, another Canadian reviewer. It's pretty high on the list here. Um, but if you keep on going, you have Audible's on here, and then Kobo, which is a Canadian site, uh, is number eleven for ranking. And then keep on going to the bloggers, and you got some YouTube interviews, and then you're at Target. Okay, and then you keep going. You have IndieBound. IndieBound, if you're not sure, that's um, a place where I believe you get um, galleys, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that's an important place to go if you're looking to uh, send out arc reading uh, material, uh, especially if you're in the um, traditional, I think, or am I thinking, oh, I know NetGalley does it. Never mind. Ignore me. I'm just saying IndieBound's on there. All right, then you have the author's website is number uh, 19. So that goes to show how popular websites are uh, when it comes to readers compared to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and the rest. Keep on going. I don't know half of these are. Um, Urban Dictionary. Now, I, I do know Urban Dictionary because I actually, when I looked up the title for my book, once upon a time, this came up. And so I didn't realize Gutter Child was an Urban Dictionary uh, name. Um, when I came, came up with the title, it basically fit the story that I was writing, the original story. Um, and so, you know, of course, their just story became integrated into the new story. So, you know, it's a bit of a double play on words in the new version. But, uh, but yeah, so apparently it is an entry on the Urban Dictionary. So I found out about that years later. Uh, then you got more interviews, and then you got more blogs and more interviews, reviews, and all that. You got a bookstore called A Books. Don't even know what that is, but uh, congratulations. Then you have, here's an interesting thing, Apple Books. So Apple Books is number 28. Now, again, this could just strictly be for this particular title. Maybe and, you know, her readers don't go on Apple Books. It is a young adult book, um, so that's worth knowing. Um, and it does have a lot more reviews on it than Barnes & Noble does. So even though it's not as popular, uh, it got a lot more reviews. So maybe it's more engaged. That's worth knowing. Uh, Binge Books, don't know it, but sounds cool. Um, might be a blog. Then you have Back to Walmart. I think we already looked at a Walmart entry. This might be for a different region. 
uh, eBay. Uh, keep going. Um, keep going. Keep going. More interviews. More interviews. You got a you know art store. More interviews. Oh, and then you have Google um, the book scanner, which is where they scan the hardcover and all that. Keep going. Keep going. SoundCloud. I guess that's a podcast. Uh, Shutterstock. <laughs> oh, that's actually probably not related to the book. I think that's just a search term. Then you have my own blog at number 50. Okay, so this is where Gutter Child has also had a presence for the last five years, almost six, and it's ranked 50. So once again, her book just killed my rankings, but that's okay um, because no one was buying. I mean, no one was searching for the term. So, you know, at least people are searching for the term now. Um, just a quick note uh, I just looked before this video, and um, as of 2021, which is the year that the that Giles Richardson's Gutter Child came out. Um, in the entire year since January, people came and looked at my site five times for this entry. For this entry. And now they, I mean, they've been to my site a bunch of times for other reasons. Um, I do have a popular um, article on um, Campfire Blaze. But uh, as far as like my books go, you know, not a lot of uh, views. Gutter Child has five views on my own site in, since January. And here we are, October. So again, goes to show how uh, important websites are or are not. And then you have Google Play Books, which I think is one of the last of the big name retailers. Now, interesting, 51th place uh, for Google Play Books. And I remember um, I did a video back in, I think last year in May, a series on how to get on a Google Play. Because Google Play, they originally were closed off to any re uh, writer, indie yeah, writers unless they went through a service. And then they recently, or not recently now, but recently at the time, uh, reopened to independent readers. So I made a big deal about getting on there thinking it was going to increase my exposure. And well, um, clearly you can see that, you know, ranked 51 for a big name title isn't great. Now, again, it could be the nature of the fact that when you have a big name traditional title, maybe people just de by default go to the big names like Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Maybe Google Play is not really the first thing you think of. Not to mention, it is an ebook seller, and you have Amazon and Barnes Noble. They do paperbacks and hardcovers, so there could be a balance of um, you know, factors there. Also, not everyone is an ebook reader. Some people prefer, like me, I actually prefer paperbacks and hardcovers. But and, you know, I make ebooks because you know that's what indie authors do. I don't particularly enjoy reading them, um, but I do like reading the, the paperbacks, which is why you know I made it my point to make at least the paperback of all my novels. Um, but yeah, it, you know th that could factor in, and don't forget too, this is also on the Google like search engine. Interesting that Google Play's product ranks 50 on its own search or 51 on its own search engine, right under my blog that no one reads. So you know there you go. Um, some research for you, and if you keep on going. Um, you're gonna find a lot of random entries, um, but I mean, all the big names are, you know, they are still at least in the top 100, and that's good. But you know, I think it's a pretty clear indicator of just how popular some of these other stores are, um, and just how uh, worth it is to um, to put all your efforts in there. Okay, so this is uh, my entry on, uh, yeah, February 19th, 2016, is the original ebook version of Gutter Child. Of mine, uh, 82nd, <laughs> which I don't think anyone's going to be searching that deep in Google for anything. So that's again obvious in the fact that no one ever you know views my Smashwords page. Um, but uh, yeah, keep on going, keep on going, keep on going, keep on going, and uh, you just again you get some interesting insights. Um, this one is also mine. This is. Um, yeah, but at this point we're now into the 101s, which basically means you're unranked. So um, when you're unranked, you know everything's 101. Now, why did I bring all this up? Because if you're an indie author, um, you know, or even if you're a mainstream author, you kind of want to know where your market is most likely going to be, because that's where a lot of your ads may go. It's where a lot of your efforts may go. And again, this is one book. This doesn't necessarily going to apply for every book. I do think it's worth exploring where you rank on your Google. So if, if you haven't done it already, I'll just look up your book title, see where you rank. Uh, but it's better if you also look up uh, popular title. Like if you're not a popular author, um, and a lot of indies are not popular, if you look up somebody, again, like this book, or if you look up, um, you know, Lean Child or, or um, you know, 
any of the uh, the top names or just a top book look up um you know hunger games look up harry potter i mean it's interesting to see like which stores will actually uh rank higher than others and if you find a trend i think that really goes to uh show just how engaged readers are on these different sites uh, but it's also to looking at the ratings the average ratings because average ratings i think also um indicate uh the reader response so i mean her gutter child on goodreads 2450 votes uh i have one so it's not zero um but you know that's way higher than the 94 that are on amazon so you know goodreads may be a good market and then the other thing too is if you're on um book bob is another one where you can do reviews i actually book bob um you know what this is just for our community service um if you do ever use BookBub, make sure if you do share a title um, with. Actually, let me go to uh, the review. If you um, if you happen to share a title with a more popular book than your own, doesn't matter how old it is or how new it is. Um, like I opened my BookBub account maybe two three months ago and put all my books in there. If you get a BookBub um, page and you import all your books, I'm going to show you first of all why I hate having other people curate my own content, um, but also why you really need to pay attention to when you do go through one of these services. Now, I am not a national bestseller. My name is not Zyle Richardson. I am Jeremy Bercy. I don't think that I have you know two star or two uh, ratings on this book when I just opened it and no one knows it's there um, you may be wondering why this even happened well once upon a time my book actually showed the correct description the problem is it showed the wrong cover so I had contacted BookBub and asked them if they could you know fix the cover for me and a few days later this is what happened I don't know anything about this this is I don't know who this character is. I don't know this story. I've never read it. I am not a you know a dystopian fiction writer. This book is not dystopian fiction. It's not even technically crime fiction. It is a mystery, but it's not. It's, now it is coming of age. There's a little bit of literary in there. A little bit of mystery. Definitely fiction, but dystopian? No. Crime? No. So, I uh, I'm a big fan of just letting authors do it themselves. So they can make sure they get it done right and uh, i put in my request about three days ago for them to fix the description which comes maybe two weeks after i asked them to fix the cover i don't know what to say about that um uh, i mean book bob is a really reputable company uh i do not disparage them at all it's the place to go uh for mailing lists and things um you know and it's clearly obvious that uh book bob didn't rank on ja richardson's um staff because Apparently they took her stats for mine. So, <laughs> I mean, I'd be curious to see if my book starts to rank on um, BookBub. So, you know, what can you do about that? But anyway, that's, um, you know, sometimes you just have to, you know, hopefully um, do what you can and, um, you know, fix things when you see that the problems arise. So, anyway, that's uh, all I really have to say about that. Um, Hope you all uh, enjoy this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, do all of the things that YouTubers tell you to do. If you do happen to do an indie book and you decide to go through all the channels, just make sure the information comes out correctly, especially if you are not, if you don't have the power to make your own changes. Uh, I know Goodreads is another one. Uh, fortunately, I was on Goodreads long before uh, Ja Richardson's book was, uh, so there's no you know, worry about getting that cross-reference. But this one, um, yeah, I don't know what to say. So just uh, yeah, read carefully. And, uh, you know, don't forget to come visit my site. Um, I spent a long time on this. Um, it's not fully finished. There's, like, my um, other media, none of that's implemented yet. So one thing I really have is, like, home, the books section, latest news, policies, and about me in contact. So, oh, yeah, and this is uh, exciting resources. Other media is actually the only one I have to finish out. But, um, you know, anytime you guys want to come on in and check it out, uh, I do welcome you guys to... Um, just to take a look uh, put a lot of time effort into this and I'm pretty happy with it um, wish it was running a little faster but sometimes you just have to blame the host not the site itself um, 
but anyway that's all hope you enjoy this and uh we'll see you next time thanks again oh and uh, i will have an atticus review an actual demonstration soon because uh, nanorhino is coming out and they're uh, they're finally going uh out of beta this week so um so if you are on the atticus train uh or if you want to be uh this coming week is going to be your week so pay attention and i will be doing a video on that uh very soon so keep an eye out all right thanks again take care bye